You mentioned fiber and earlier you mentioned the probiotics that potentially could be beneficial for um, diarrhea during um, cancer treatment, which gets me thinking a bit more about the microbiome here, whether you're a fan of fermented foods, um, if there's something that people should be considering. And I guess more more broadly here, you know, what is the, the potential role of the microbiome um, with regards to someone's um, cancer prognosis and why is it something that I guess we should be thinking about from a, a nutrition perspective during this time? Oh, yeah, this is a very exciting area of research uh, that I've been seeing is tapping into seeing a uh, relationship between the microbiome and responses to therapy. And I think one I'm really excited about are some studies that have come out about immunotherapy and the response to immunotherapy for melanoma in relation to diet. So um, there's this group out at MD Anderson that has done this uh, research and found that those that had higher fiber diets had a better response, including better survival uh, from immunotherapy. And they also found that these individuals had a more diverse uh, microbiome than those that had a lower fiber diet. They also did a really cool um, study where they looked at the responders and the non-responders, and they actually did a fecal microbiome transplant from the responders into the a subset of non-responders. It's only, I think they ended up with only 15 individuals, but about six of them got a response when they previously were not responsive to immunotherapy. So this is really a great example of how the microbiome could be playing a role in how somebody responds to therapy. Uh, there is some also interesting research about the side effects of therapy uh, that there is, I'll give one specific example here. So arenotecan is a chemotherapeutic agent that's often used in GI related cancers and it gets metabolized by the liver. And then uh, the liver or the metabolite of it gets excreted in, into the bile, into the intestine. Well, the bacteria there, some of them have activity to remove. So it gets glucuronidated in the liver and then gets excreted into the bile, into the intestine. Well, these bacteria have an enzyme that removes that. So then essentially it's making the drug active again. And so what happens is then we have the side effects and increased toxicities related to that drug. Um, so this is important to understand because arenotecan has a very high prevalence of, of diarrhea, severe diarrhea a side effect, which is often what ends up being the dose limiting effect or dose limiting because it just causes so many side effects. So if we can see that, okay, these individuals are more at risk of getting these side effects because their gut bacteria are going to metabolize this and, and get more of this into the system. So those are just a couple of examples, which I think are just some good examples, though, of how the microbiome can impact responses to therapy, also side effects to therapy as well, but just tapping into that area of research. Right. It sounds like there's, there's so much to explore there. It's a, it's a, a complex area of, of health when you're thinking about the 38 trillion microbes, different species, we're thinking about different types of cancer, um, different types of therapy, so many different contexts to consider here. 